Stellar Blade is confirmed coming to PC on June 11th, and not only do we have that release date, we also have the PC system requirements. They go into a lot of detail, but we also have confirmation of PC-specific features and upgrades. For example, DLSS 4 and FSR 3 support. It does not mention FSR 4. If it's at least FSR 3.1, there's a good chance that maybe AMD could whitelist the uh, driver level upgrade uh, in the uh, you know in a future driver update. Uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. Maybe at least OptiScaler would have nice been see both. It is also mentioning they have a Japanese and Chinese voiceover available, including, uh, you know, face matching to the lip sync. Ultra wide support, which is always good to see in a PC release and is not always a given. Sometimes that needs to get modded in and stuff, so it's nice to see official support for that as well as DualSense controller support with the trigger effects and haptic feedback, although it does mention that a wired connection is necessary to get the full range of support for those features, which is pretty typical. That's generally the case for DualSense support on PC. You need the wired connection to get all of the stuff. There's some additional costumes added to the game. All of the additional content, by the way, is available in the PlayStation version with an upgrade, but look at this, higher resolution texture support. That's really good to see. So there's also that graphical upgrade available now. Looks like you'll be able to check a 4K textures box in the graphic settings and get upgraded to those uh, new textures. I don't think there's mention of any particular other graphical changes or anything like that, um, but at least we did get confirmation of that and the release date of June 11th. But there is a bit of an elephant in the room before we talk about the system requirements, which is, as is the usual, you can't buy this in over 130 countries because while it doesn't require a PSN account, PlayStation is weird about this. So they started requiring PlayStation Network accounts to buy uh, to play PlayStation games on PC, but then they backed off on the PSN requirement but have not backed off on blocking the sale of the game in regions that don't offer PSN. Again, if you check uh, Steam database right now for this, it says this package cannot be activated or purchased in the following countries. And that's a lot, <laughs> you know? So this is something I still would like uh, to be fixed on PlayStation games on PC. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to the main event, which is how about the PC system requirements? And check this out. The minimum requirement for 60 FPS at 1080p, by the way, at low settings, but 60 FPS at 1080p is being listed as a GTX 1066 gigabyte or Radeon RX 588 gigabyte. It's been a while since I've seen cards like that being listed for 60 FPS at 1080p in a uh, you know big modern AAA game release. So that's pretty cool. Now, one thing that could be the case but is not being stated here is it's possible that the graphics presets could be including upscaling, in which case this might be like 1080p with an asterisk. If it's, you know, with FSR performance mode, then it's really 540p and is gonna look pretty blurry on the upscale. So other than that though, the potential that sometimes graphics presets hide upscaling and don't state it explicitly, um, it would be really nice to at least dream that it's 1080p 60 at low settings natively, also, they're confirming these CPUs, like an i5-7600K or Ryzen 5 1600X, can run the game at 60 FPS, because even if this has upscaling involved, um, that's still 60 FPS, uh, unless there's frame generation involved and they're not telling us. But again, there's no reason to believe those things are involved. It's just something I'm always suspicious of until I test a game myself. Now, uh, that's pretty reasonable hardware, 16 gigabytes of RAM, not VRAM, 75 gigabytes of storage. They do say an SSD is recommended, but not required. And honestly, this looks way more reasonable entry point than a lot of uh, recent releases. Now, that being said, that actually maybe makes sense, because if you look at uh, Eurogamer, which is also you know, a digital foundry co uh, con contribution to Eurogamer, I'm just looking at the text-based version, uh, their analysis of the Stellar Blade PS5 release, this actually maybe sounds reasonable, because if you get down to where they're talking about the resolutions and frame rates, when, and it has a few options as is typical on consoles, the quality mode is actually mostly locked to a native 4K at 30 FPS on the PlayStation 5. 
Now, again, that's not 60 FPS, but a lot of times even the 30 FPS, you know, 4K modes on PS5 often aren't a native 4K. This does say that it does occasionally have some dynamic resolution scaling, but the fact that it could often output a native 4K 30 on console level hardware is pretty interesting. And that the performance mode could do 1440p uh, 60, but, um, uh, and then I think uses a spatial upscaler up to, uh, uh, up to a higher output resolution. They also had a balanced mode that is kind of between a 1080p to 1440p internal rendering resolution, and then uses temporal upscaling up to 4K. And again, that's probably at settings that are beyond the low settings on PC. So with that in mind for console, um, I think that actually means these reasonable looking uh, PC system requirements actually could be realistic. For example, for recommended settings at 1440p60 at medium settings, they're going up to an i5-8400 or a Ryzen 5 3600X. A Ryzen 5 3600X is fairly equivalent in gaming performance to the CPU inside the PlayStation 5. Uh, and again, can hit 60 FPS on the PS5. And it could be the case that the medium settings are something like what the consoles are doing. Although it's also possible that it's gonna be more like the high settings or even the very high settings. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this because at the recommended settings for 1440p 60 at medium settings, if we look at the GPUs, we're looking at a 2060 Super or an RX 5700 XT. Now let's jump in to Tech Power Up's relative performance chart. Now for one thing, you might not have one of the GPUs being listed in the system requirements, so this can help you figure out where you fall relative to those, but also uh, this could uh, help us tell how these are scaling uh, GPUs against each other, but also against maybe PS5-ish level GPU. So the 1060 and the RX 580 are listed for 1080p low at 60 FPS. These are fairly equivalent GPUs. If you have something, now do note that it mentioned the six gigabyte version of the 1060. So if you had the three gigabyte version, you might be out of luck, but these are similar to GPUs like a GTX 980, uh, something like a 1650 Super is right in this uh, kind of class. A GTX 1660 is only a little bit more powerful. GTX 1070 is starting to get more powerful. And we kind of scale up from here, the RTX 3050, uh, the 1080s, 59% more powerful, 2060s, 60% more powerful. Uh, now we're getting to cards like the RX 6600, the 2060 Super, and now notice we're starting to get into the territory of their recommended spec. I keep clicking the wrong button. The recommended spec here being a 2060 Super or a Radeon RX 5700 XT. Again, look, in the tech power up, uh, performance chart here, uh, these are listed right in the same ballpark. Um, so if I now, and notice that again, this is also almost doubling what they're asking for from the GPU, uh, which seems to make sense because we're scaling up uh, from 1080p to 1440p, which would take an increased GPU load and increasing from low settings to medium. So this all sounds pretty reasonable. And again, if I set the 2060 Super as the baseline, the 5700 XT is generally similar performance, sometimes stronger, sometimes weaker, depending on the particular game and what you're trying to do with it. Obviously in like ray tracing, the 5700 XT is not even supported, right? And 2060 Super would have, have a better job on that. But anyway, these are kind of in this ballpark. Now what's also interesting is if you look uh, at other things in this ballpark, the PS5 GPU, would be somewhere in this general area, about 15 to 20% more powerful than what they're listing for 1440p60 at medium settings. So uh, 2060 Super, 5700 XT, 1440p60 medium. And again, if you look at that uh, Eurogamer analysis, saying that the performance mode delivers 1440p60 FPS and sticks relatively close to 1440p. Uh, and then uses a spatial upscaling method uh, up to 4K output, but basically internally rendering, usually sticking to around 1440p. Like I said, that seems actually pretty consistent with this because let's say medium settings are a bit below uh, what the PS5 was doing. Maybe the PS5 is doing more like high settings, then this seems to make a lot of sense. Notice that high settings, 1440p60, are first of all, 
Everything past this point is sticking to the same CPU, uh, which is that Ryzen 5 3600X i5-8400, which again, makes perfect sense because if the PS5 G CPU can hit 60 FPS, then these CPUs should be able to hit 60 FPS unless there's a disastrous optimization situation. So that's cool. Uh, now, like I said, scaling from medium settings to high settings, but staying at 1440p 60, we're up to a 2070 Super or an RX 6700 XT. Well, again, if we leave the 2060 Super as the baseline and we're scrolling up to something like a 6700 XT or a 2070 Super, uh, we're now looking, uh, 2070 Super is about 15% more powerful. So that looks like scaling from medium settings to high settings, right? Makes sense. And then the 6700 XT is in here at 37% more powerful, a bit more powerful than that uh, 2070 Super in general, but you know, game by game, it can vary. So again, and again, the 6700 XT is generally a bit more powerful than the GPU in the PS5. So interesting stuff. This all seems to line up. It all seems to make sense. Uh, but then what would it take to run at very high settings, which I'm guessing are probably the maximum settings at 4K60? They're asking for an RTX 3080 or an RX 7900 XT. Let's go ahead and take a look at what uh, how that scales on this chart. So if I set, um, maybe we'll go with the 2070 Super as the baseline if that's on here and say, okay, 2070 Super is 1440p 60. What if we wanna go up to uh, high settings? What if we wanna go to 4K 60? Well, 4K is a huge resolution jump. And what if I want to go to uh, um, very high settings as well. So an additional settings jump. Okay, 2070 Super, we scroll down, maybe you'll see your GPU falling into this list, which again means you're somewhere in this kind of category and you know either getting additional per, uh, frames per second or additional resolution or additional graphic settings, right? As we scroll up to the 3080, uh, that's a 79% uh, you know, performance jump, which kind of makes sense because we're jumping from 1440p to 4K and additional graphic settings on top of that. That's a huge jump. This is a big performance jump. This is all making sense. Let's now set the 3080 as the baseline and look at how that 7900 XT fits into this. The 7900 XT is 28% more powerful than a 3080. Now, some of you guys might be like, these are worlds apart. They shouldn't be on the same tier list. But the other way of looking at this is generally uh, the system requirements lists aren't doing anything, um, aren't really saying that these two GPUs deliver exactly the same experience. Generally, what they're saying is these two GPUs have been tested to generally offer about 60 FPS at these settings. Maybe one of them's offering 55, maybe one of them's offering 75, you know, maybe 160, 170. It doesn't generally mean that these, this is not a graphics card review. It's just saying that these are probably gonna get you 4K 60 at max settings. Cool. Usually a 6800 XT would be a better match for a 3080. So it is interesting that that's not what they listed here. But uh, I don't think anything here looks wildly crazy. Like I said, this overall, especially if this is actually talking about native rendering resolution, uh, all looks very reasonable. Uh, it's kind of a breath of fresh air, honestly, looking uh, compared to a lot of games recently. And while I'm suspicious that sometimes they may be hiding some amount of resolution scaling, the fact that the PlayStation 5, the base PlayStation 5, not the PS5 Pro, could render usually at, an, at a native 4K 30 or a native most of the time 1440p 60, uh, at what are presumably something along the lines of the high settings here. Uh, if this is a Nixie's port on consoles, oftentimes the high settings line up uh, to PS5-ish. So, I mean, we'll have to see how it goes. I didn't catch whether Nixie's was working on this port. Maybe I should look into that. But anyway, um, that's pretty much what we've got uh, for you here. I could scroll through the article to see if there's anything else of note, but I will link uh, in the video description. Uh, any of the sources that I used here, there's this PS5 blog post. Again, we do have release times available, so there is that, that could be interesting. So find where you're at in the world. I'm blocking Sydney, so if you're in Australia, it looks like 9 a.m. AEDT. Um, and you can see the release times. Uh, anything else particularly interesting doesn't look like it. So I hope all of you have an excellent day.